Welcome everybody, I'm here to talk about Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Now, this has been one of those movies that a lot of people have been waiting for. You know, last year's Star Wars Episode 7 was a pretty gigantic success. And now they wanted to see, you know, can they keep that momentum going? So this one isn't a direct sequel or part of the main canon really. It's actually set as a prequel before the very first Star Wars, which I was actually quite happy with. I thought it was a good place to set because there's a lot of things in the first Star Wars that are kind of left unsaid and this one helps to fill a lot of gaps. This review is going to be split into half so the first half I'm going to talk just generally about the film without any spoilers but my second half I'm going to get into a few spoilers and go on a few rants so if you've seen it stick around but otherwise cut off halfway through if you yet to see the film. Straight off the bat this is a pretty good film, I thought. I was pretty impressed. What I really liked about this is that it didn't feel like it fit into the rest of the Star Wars universe in the sort of the style and direction. They brought in Gareth Edwards, who previously directed Godzilla, which was probably a bit of a mixed reaction, but even though some of his films haven't been really well received, I actually really admire his style of direction. He seems to have a really grounded and gritty sort of visual palette to his films. The Godzilla film in particular had some amazing visual sequences I thought and a lot of that comes down to just the eye that he's got for action and Rogue One has got quite a lot of action scenes in it and there are two in particular that come to mind as being pretty outstanding. One's about the middle of the film and then the final climax of the film is another great action sequence and I think he just did a great job with those. So while I praise the film for overall being pretty good and a pretty decent story to tell, I do think it has quite a few problems. I mean, a lot of the reviews coming out are just praising the film overall, but I feel that a lot of people aren't really talking about the characters in this, which in my view are pretty weak. I feel that the two main characters of this story actually aren't that compelling or interesting at all and in fact are kind of downright boring. So Jin Erso, who's the main female lead, and Cassian, who's the main sort of not Han Solo type soldier guy, both of them are just very one note and they try and give Jin's character a bit of development and some emotional arc, but it really doesn't resonate for me particularly. Every time she was on screen, she just felt incredibly flat and I just didn't get anything out of what I would expect out of a leading role in a film like this because Star Wars are built on great characters, I think. I mean, the story is always there as well, but you know, your Han Solos, your Princess Leia, Chewie, and I'm not even a Star Wars fan, but you know, those characters are iconic and of, you know, Luke Skywalker, that guy, whatever, he's, he's in there too. They build these really rich and exciting characters to watch on screen with actors that do a great job bringing that to life. And here, that is, I think, the main thing that this film is missing. It could have been amazing if they had spent a bit more time really working on the characters and developing their stories and giving them, you know, more to really do in this because they just kind of launch from one set piece to the next and don't really offer much else except just to stand there and go through the motions. I would go as far to say that the main two, Jin and Cassian, were just boring really boring characters and the actors as well I think were pretty flat and I just didn't really like watching them on screen at all. I mean there are some good characters in here but they're background characters. I mean the new droid in this one is really funny. He's got some great lines which I think the humor on this hit pretty well and then there's a, a pair of guys one who's this blind fighter and I think he's a pretty great character as well but we see you know less of him because he's not one of the main characters so it's really weird that we have some great supporting characters who are just there on the side and then our main ones are just so flat and boring it just felt really mismatched to me but if you're a Star Wars fan like many of you are you'll probably love this film because it caters to a lot of fanboy sort of nostalgia there are a lot of callbacks there are characters that pop up that will be familiar to some of you and it does a really good job in answering 
some questions from A New Hope that you may have had issues with or may have always wondered about. So I think that was really smart of them as well. So before I jump into spoiler territory, I'll wrap up by saying that I think this is pretty good and I'd give it a three and a half out of five. So definitely go check it out. If you're a Star Wars fan, it's a no brainer for you. But if you're on the fence about it, I'd recommend it because it definitely has some great moments in there that are worth watching. And I'd say the, the final climax as well is almost worth it alone. Check it out and I'd be keen to know what you think about it. Now, I want to get into a bit more of the nitty gritty. And there's definitely a few things that sort of bothered me about the whole film. So I've already mentioned a lot about the main leads and their sort of impact on the story, which is probably one of my biggest gripes. I'm just really curious about the making of this film because there were a lot of highly publicized reshoots and potential problems with the original first cuts of this film. According to tabloids and stuff like that, Gareth Edwards delivered a cut which was probably just too dark and too gritty. And so Disney ordered quite extensive reshoots and they were overseen by another director, supposedly. So it sounds like the behind the scenes making of this film would actually be almost as entertaining as the film itself because when you hear about reshoots and that sort of thing, it's kind of makes you feel like the film's probably gonna be at least, a, if not a disaster, then pretty bad. I mean, reshoots can be a sort of typical part of the filmmaking process, but when you've got something that's extensive for a uh, for a film that's as high profile as this, it doesn't really bode well at all. There's a lot of content in the original trailers and even some of the spots leading up to the weeks before release that include content not seen in the finished film, which is pretty bizarre to include obviously removed content from the film in spots that close to release. But it seems like they may have completely reshot or restructured the entire third act. They seem to do a pretty good job of mixing and matching the original footage with the reshot footage because I was went into it knowing that they had done all that and so I was trying to keep an eye out for inconsistencies or obviously reshot material and I couldn't really pick it up. Another thing that kind of bothered me is that Forrest Whitaker's character in this must have had a bigger part before they went into the reshoots because he's barely in this film. He's a fantastic actor. He's probably one of the best actors in this film, but he's got nothing really to do in it. He just kind of is there very briefly in the beginning and then he has one major scene about a third of the way through and then he gets killed. <laughs> it's like, that was a gigantic waste of this character. Also, there's some stuff in it that just doesn't really seem to make sense. So for example, one of the biggest plot lines of the whole thing and one of the central points of potential conflict is the fact that Jin's father in this, played by Mads Mikkelsen, is the guy that the Empire basically kidnaps and coerces into working and creating the Death Star. But as he's doing it, he is working on a side plan to enact his revenge when the time comes. And at this point in the story where we pick it up, the Death Star is complete. It's done. We see it firing off tests and it's, it's already up and functional. Cassian has orders to kill him. So why bother with killing him when the fucking Death Star is already complete? All that's gonna do is nothing. It's not gonna do anything. All it's going to do is serve conflict for the story for Jin because it's her father. It's just going to be like, oh no, what are you, why are you trying to kill my father, blah, blah, blah. It just felt like an excuse to force some tension into the script because from a story structure point of view, it doesn't really make sense. Is he going to go and then not finish the already finished Death Star? Is, is he going to go build another Death Star? Death Star is what it's not never made clear why they want to kill him in this scene and that really so that just really bothered me it's a, it's a pretty small thing but it bothered me finally one thing that I think was amazing this moment alone I think made it for me and even as not a Star Wars fan I was pretty fanboying out at this moment so it's right towards the end of the film Beware, this is huge spoilers, but Darth Vader boards the Rebellion ship 
and he is just fucking dudes up left and right. He's fucking force throwing them up and then slicing them with his lightsaber and he's choking them and fucking ripping their weapons away from them and just cutting sick. And given that the last time we saw Darth Vader in one of the Star Wars canon films was episode three, and <laughs> it's the moment that so many Star Wars fans fucking hate is when he first becomes Darth Vader and he's found out that Padme and what I can't even remember the details where he just goes, no! Oh my god, it was so bad. And so, jumping from that to this and seeing Darth Vader just kick ass, it was really cool. So, that, that was awesome. I really loved seeing that. So, there's a lot of really great moments like that throughout the whole film. I want to give this a 4 at least out of 5, but it just, those characters really hold me back from doing that. So, 3.5 out of 5. It's a good film, go check it out. It's got its problems, but what film doesn't? If you guys have any films you'd like to hear my thoughts on, please let me know. And I hope you have an awesome break over Christmas and New Year's. I hope you all get exceptionally drunk and get some sweet presents. And I'll see you in the new year. Cheers.